Kruger here from VeggieRasta.com and today we are going to uh, prepare amazing vegan uh, brownies uh, with chocolate frosting. Uh, the, I'm going to use the spelt flour for, for the recipe uh, but you can easily make it as the gluten-free version uh, if you have any gluten-free flour uh, on hand. So, first of all, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, we have a uh, one cup of uh, oat milk here and we need to get a, a kind of like the cream consistency. Uh, we need to get it curdled. Uh, uh, so, in order to achieve that effect, uh, I'm going to use the apple cider vinegar. It's very important that we use the uh, very very quality apple cider vinegar ideally uh, with uh, it's called ma <coughs> sorry it's called mother uh, so it's that uh, uh, remainings of the apple uh, uh, from the fermentation and this is my favorite company which I will link uh, to below the video uh, and in order to achieve that curdled uh, effect we are going to add uh, to our uh, oat milk a teaspoon uh, of the vegan vinegar and just mix it and put it aside and in the meantime uh, for the base apart from the flour one of the most uh, important ingredients uh, are beetroots and here uh, I'm going to use the cook beetroots. Uh, so for this purpose, I actually chose uh, two medium-sized beetroots that I roasted in the oven, wrapped in the foil uh, for a, for a, for around one hour. And these are absolutely fine to use. Uh, after the roasting, just one thing to remember: uh, do not uh, start blending them right away. Uh, just let them cool down completely so the juice uh, is not not so they are not too juicy uh, they need to uh, get quite solid again um, and we're going to blend it uh, with some orange juice or you can also use the uh, mandarin juice uh, and I'm going to just add a little bit uh, just to start the blender uh, and if you are in a hurry and you don't have time for roasting beetroots uh, you can use the pre-cooked beetroots from the supermarket uh, they sell it normally in uh, all of them uh, however it is very important that it's the pure cooked beetroot not the beetroot with other added salt or vinegars because of course it will uh, completely mess up uh, with the flavors um, so now we're going to blend it. It's still a bit too solid and even if I am shaking. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, the rest of the uh, juice. It was around uh, one uh, third of the cup of the orange juice. Now it went blended again. Okay, so this is the consistency we are after. As you can see, it is very, very creamy. And for this recipe, uh, we need a round uh, half a cup. So I'm going to transfer it into the measuring cup. Okay, so it is roughly uh, half a cup. I'm going to leave the rest uh, for the later uh, because if our dough is a bit uh, too sticky, uh, too solid to dry, uh, it will be good to actually add a little bit more. Uh, for the rest of the ingredients, I'm going to use uh, 
one cup of uh, spelt flour but you can use the wheat flour or the gluten-free flour and I'm going to mix it with half a cup of uh, cacao, raw cacao powder uh, half a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon as well as a uh, one and a half teaspoon of uh, the baking powder okay and some uh, sea salt as well uh, just to bring all the flavors up okay and now we're just going to mix it together the dry ingredients just to ensure that everything is well combined okay now we can check the plant-based milk with the apple cider vinegar so it's slowly getting a bit curdled and uh, we're going to uh, whisk it with a uh, half a cup of coconut sugar quarter cup of olive oil and a tiny bit of a uh, almond uh, almond paste and the one that I'm using here from Taylor College, uh, it's very, very strong and it has the paste consistency. Uh, so I'm just going to use a literally tiny bit because otherwise uh, it will become uh, quite bitter and of course it's not something that we want. Okay. So just ensure that it's mixed well and the next step is actually adding the, our beetroot paste so I'm going to transfer our beetroot into this bowl start mixing again like as you can see it's quite it's getting thick but we need to ensure that it's also smooth okay and the next step will be transferring the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients but we need to do it very very slowly uh, to prevent the formating of lumps so I'm just going to add a tiny bit mix it with the flour uh, then add a little bit more mix it again okay uh, so basically you can see that the color is changing uh, and I still can see some lumps here so we need to give it a good uh, stir and ensure that all the ingredients are very well combined because otherwise uh, our bra 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 uh, brownies will not raise uh, and will not taste as they should so mix it for around another three to uh, two three minutes just to ensure that everything is uh, well combined and it's uh, because it's getting thick uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape everything from this bowl just so we have everything here and I will give it a good stir over the next two minutes just to ensure it's all smooth and right now our uh, brownie dough is ready just look at the 
lovely smooth consistency so that's uh, exactly what you want to achieve and it will go uh, ideally on the square uh, spring uh, pan uh, into the preheated oven for to around 190 degrees uh, and we're gonna bake it for around uh, two, uh, 20 to 25 minutes uh, always check if you are not sure with the toothpick uh, if the you know if the cake is alright uh, the toothpick should come out uh, completely dry um, just to ensure that it's um, evenly covered And the next step, once the uh, once our brownies are uh, cooled down, uh, we will uh, make the chocolate frosting. Welcome back! And right now our uh, brownies are ready. Uh, so it's time to prepare the frosting. And for the frosting, uh, the ingredients are very, very simple. So we are going to use uh, three very ripe uh, avocados. Uh, we just chuck them into the blender. Uh, we are also going to add uh, half a cup of maple syrup. Okay. And as well as uh, a little bit of almond uh, paste <clears throat> tiny bit of sea salt uh, to bring up the sweetness uh, in the frosting and also half a cup of raw cacao powder and two tablespoons of uh, coconut oil. So I'm going to measure those because of course we don't want it to be too liquid. And now we are going to uh, blend it all. frosting is now ready and we're gonna cover our cake uh, with um, chocolate so we're gonna have even more chocolate very very lovely and creamy consistency and because I added some uh, olive oil there uh, we can be quite generous with it uh, because then we're going to put it into the fridge and it will uh, uh, it will get more solid uh, so you will be able to cut it through uh, with no uh, problems and our brownie with chocolate frosting is now ready uh, I'm going to put it into the fridge uh, for around run hour, uh, one hour uh, so the frosting gets solid and then we're gonna enjoy it uh, with a cup of dandelion coffee. Take care, bye!